previously seen on Mama Cherry's stay at home prevention, Corona Soul in the Bowl. This is what happened. Let me get to you close up. Okay, it's Mama With Cherry. You, I'm going to actually read from cover to cover for the first birth of the restaurant. This is what you've been waiting for. Put the glasses back on. It's a kitchen nightmare. Oh, yeah. Ah. Wanna do it, do it, do it. Well, hello to all my gorgeous peeps. Yes, you out there in my universal world of peeps. And yes, it's me, Mama Cherry, and I am back with another installment of my, here you go, Soul in a Bowl. Yes. Now, I hope you've been sticking with me because as I promised at the beginning of this pandemic that I was going to read for you cover to cover my book so that you get all of the recipes. However, don't forget, I have now added this cookbook onto our website www.mamacherrysoulfood you can go there you can now purchase the entire book it is my second edition it is updated yeah it's updated so because I've included a lot of new stuff in it and it's cheap I ain't even gonna tell you how much because I keep throwing sales so it goes up it goes down, but it never goes too high because I want you all to enjoy it. And remember, it's interactive, okay? Whereas all you've got to do is go onto the website, purchase the book, and then it comes to you kind of like live. You can read a recipe, but if you want to think, mm, I wonder how it looks to do it, boom, hit that title, and it will take you straight to the video where I will show you how to do it, okay? So... I need to get into this because the last chapters that I read to you, my meats, that bad boy was so long, I had to break it down into three segments. So it was like seven, part one, seven, part two, seven, part three. So we've actually been doing this now for well over eight weeks. I mean, it's been a while. I think it's close to 10 weeks that we've been at it. So this one is coming at to you. It's number eight. Because this is our vegetables and sides. Okay? Vegetable and sides. Now, I'm going to get started. I don't know how long it's going to take me to do this one. It may be one. It may be two. You'll know at the end. Okay? So sit back. Get yourself a cup of tree. Uh, say get yourself a cup of tree no a cup of tea get yourself a cup of tea cup of coffee whatever you like i'm gonna have me a ginger shot halfway through just to boost that immune system here we go mama's vegetables and sides oh guess what and i have finally managed to get me some glasses so let me put my glasses on hey here we go black eyed peas with ham oh this is one of my favorites Sometimes known as cowboy's caviar or black eyed, pea, um, black eyed peas are as common as baked beans in many homes in the South. Unlike many dried beans, they don't need to be soaked overnight before cooking anymore. I like them cooked with a nice piece of ham or bacon, but they are just as good served up as a vegetarian meal or combined with rice. And then they're kind of known as Hoppin' John's, all right? Now what you're going to need, 300 grams of dried black eyed peas or two tins of black eyed peas. They come ready made in a tin now, so I just go out and buy the tin because it's just as easy. Two tablespoons of vegetable oil, one onion diced, one garlic clove chopped, one small green, one small red diced pepper. 
okay? Green peppers and red peppers. 250 grams of cooked ham or 12 smoked bacon rations chopped up. A half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of, you know what, mama's love dust, baby, yeah, peon, drop it in the pot. Two large tomatoes chopped in a can of chopped tomatoes, and a bunch of coriander. Um, sorry if there's any noise that you can hear on the outside, that's my recycling, they, they, you know, we're still on lockdown and they take their time coming to pick up this recycling, but they're here, so let's just leave them to do their job. If you're using dried black eyed peas, put them in a large pan with enough water to cover them generously and bring them to a boil with a little salt. Simmer for about 40 to 50 minutes until tender, but you don't want them too mushy, okay? And then drain well. Heat a pan, of, um, a large frying pan, add the onion, garlic, peppers, ham, and bacon and cook for 5 minutes over a medium heat until the vegetables are softened. Add the cooked black-eyed peas and the salt, pepper, and Cajun season and stir together. Continue to cook over a low heat for 10 minutes. Then add the tomatoes. Cover and simmer for 15 minutes and scatter over some coriander. Peong done! And it's delicious. So, moving straight on to Hoppin' John's, okay? Rice and peas is familiar to anyone from the Caribbean. Well, Hoppin' John's is pretty much the same thing. The main difference is that in the southern states of America, we use black eyed peas. There are many stories about the origins of the name. I like to believe the one reported by Raymond Skokovla. I can't even spell, say it. S-O-K-O-L-O-V. Former food editor for the New York Times. He wrote that the dish goes back as far as 1841. When according to an oral tradition, it was sold on the streets of Charleston, South Carolina by a crippled man known as Hoppin' John. Hoppin' John is traditionally served on New Year's Day with cornbread and greens. The greens for dollar, for the dollar bean, bill, and the cornbread is that gold. With all that symbolic money on the table, the hope is that wealth would continue throughout the years, okay? So it's kind of like you always have a little bit of black eyed peas cooking on New Year's Eve. Bring in that dough. Now, for 46 people, you're going to need some dry, 150 grams of dried black eyed peas or 400 can, gram, gram can of black eyed peas drained. Four, 40 milliliters of vegetable oil. One onion chopped. 450 grams of easy cook American style rice, one teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, a half one teaspoon of ground turmeric, and a liter of water. If you're using the dried black eyed peas, put them in a large pan with enough water to cover generously and bring them to a boil with a little salt. Simmer for about 40 to 50 minutes, pretty much just like we cooked those black eyed peas just before. Heat the oil in a large pan, add the oil, add the onion and the black eyed peas until uh, black eyed peas and fry until the onion is soft and translucent. Add the rice, salt, pepper, and turmeric and stir for about a minute. Uh, until the rice is coated with the seasonings and appears translucent. Add the water. Oh, and don't forget to put mama's love dust in there. It goes in most of my recipes. Um and, and then you want to boil it, bring it to a boil, reduce the heat a little bit. Cook uncovered for about 15 minutes. Try not to disturb it too much. What I tell people to do when they're cooking this rice, walk away from the pan and let it do its stuff. Once it has absorbed all of that water, then you can step back and then I give it a stir. Mix those beans and black eyed peas in with the rice, cover it and remove it from the heat. And it will come out perfect, ready to serve. Okay, moving on. See, I like me some black eyed peas. So here's my next one: black eyed peas, a la chef. Oh yes, when I had my soul food restaurant, I had I had to try and get a little bit fancy, so I called it a la chef. This is what I do with my black eyed peas. Once again, black eyed peas are on the menu. I created this recipe while I was still at the Soul Food Shack. It's a simple meal which takes just 
15 minutes to prepare if you're using your tinned or canned black eyed peas. You want four tablespoons of vegetable oil, one onion diced, a half each of green, red, and yellow peppers diced, one, one garlic clove chopped, one courgette or, or zucchini to some people diced, one teaspoon of guess what? My love does baby, yeah, yeah. Pam, drop it in the pot. One, let me see, what else? A half teaspoon of dried chili flakes, or according to your taste. Um, 400 gram can of chopped tomatoes, can of sweet corn, a can of black eyed peas drained, and 200 grams of cheddar cheese grated, and 25 grams of fresh coriander with the salts and the leaves, chop it up, and salt and pepper. Now here's how you do it. Heat the oil in a casserole. Add the onions, peppers, garlic, and courgette. And fry over a medium heat for five minutes until softened. Stir in the Cajun seasoning and the chili flakes. Cook for another minute or more. Then you want to stir in the tomatoes. Add the sweet corn and the black eyed peas and gently fold them into the tomato base. Continue to cook for about five minutes until the sauce has reduced by half, but you don't want it to totally evaporate. Season with salt and pepper. Sprinkle with the grated cheese on top and place in an oven or under a hot grill for two minutes to melt the cheese. Scatter with the coriander. Serve over a bed of rice with chicken or fish or on a piece of toast as a quick snack. My black eyed peas a la shack is delicious. All right, now y'all know me. I got to, whoops, I got to drop. I'm sitting under these lights, so I tend to moisten up a bit. So let me just ah, wipe it down. Now, moving on to vegetable jambalaya. Okay, now remember, I did jambalaya under the meat, but now this is a vegetarian version of my jambalaya. So let me just read it on out to you. This dish is very similar to the meat version. Of course, there is no meat in it. So I like to jazz it up with a mixture of brown and white rice, okay? It's delicious. If you can get the assortment of rices, different types of grains, it makes it <laughs> yummy, yummy. Here we go. Three tablespoons of vegetable or olive oil. Two onions chopped roughly, one thin, thinly sliced. One red, one green, one yellow um, pepper. I always cut them in half, I dice half, I slice the other half, okay? Teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin, and a, teaspoon, uh, and a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Some salt, black pepper, and then uh, if you're going to, you can omit this if you want, but some people, some vegetarians like they like their veggie sausages, so I chop up the veggie sausages to put in it. Then one chili, I prefer scotch bonnet because it just gives that lovely mm, flavor. 120 grams of wild rice, 120 grams of brown rice, and 120 grams of American easy cook white rice. Now these gives you, this is for a really big pot, okay? You can always reduce it according to your family and your taste. And then I like to add some mixed vegetables, um, carrots, courgettes, some peas, green beans, broccoli. Go out and buy yourself a bag of frozen veg. Bam! Does the trick, okay? Then you got all your veg. You ain't got to sit there chopping it all up. However, I do like to get some of that fresh veg because we're going to use some of that on the topping, okay? So, here's what you do. Place a large saucepan over medium heat and add one tablespoon of oil followed by the chopped onions, the peppers, and the crushed garlic. And then you put in a little bit of my Cajun seasoning, the cumin, salt, and pepper. Then you're going to add your vegetarian sausages. And you're going to cook those for about five minutes until the onions and peppers are soft and the sausage has begun to brown. All right. The spices will continue to give off a fragrance as you coat the pan, which will enhance the dish. I call this seasoning the pot. Oh, yes. Remember that the Scotch bonnet chilies are very 
very hot. So I don't recommend chopping them up. I recommend dropping them in whole so that you can remove it. You'll get that heat, you'll get that flavor, but you will not necessarily get head blown off. Okay? So add the wild rice and brown rice and the easy cook rice stir. And then you need to add the rest of your spices. Um, stir everything together until the rice and get it to cook until the rice is fully cooked. Now, using the grains and the brown rice, it takes a little longer to cook. So be patient. Make sure you've got enough stock in there. All right. When the rice has swollen and is almost cooked, add some smoked tofu if you like and simmer for another 10 minutes. Adjust according to um, your uh, flavoring. Your taste. Heat the remaining um, oil in a large frying pan, then add the thinly sliced onions, strips of peppers, some mushrooms, and any other fresh vegetables you like. And then you serve your rice, which has already got some mixed veg in it, and then you're going to top it with some more veg. Boom, lally, boom, lally, boom, delicious. Oh, yes, I like this one. Spring greens and kale with ham hock. Mm, love it. Greens have always been a part of a soul food diet and a southern one in general. In America, a variety can be found. Some, such as turnip greens, are the tops of well-known root veg. Other popular varieties, such as collard greens and mustard greens, are closely associated with curly kale and leafy cabbage. When I arrived in the UK, it was a struggle to find any greens to prepare for my Sunday lunch. Like my slave forefathers, I quickly adapted to what was available. And I discovered that by combining spring greens and curly kale, I could get very close to the flavors that I used to have back home. This dish is great with or without meat. As I cook for both meat eaters and vegetarians, I usually divide the batch of greens and set aside a small amount for cooking without the meat. Now, what you're going to need, you're going to need some spring greens, some curly kale, or you can get you some turnip greens if you can find them. Um, I like a kilo of smoked ham hock on the bone or some bacon chopped. And then two onions, one green pepper, one garlic clove, one to two teaspoons of dried chili flakes, a teaspoon of salt, some black pepper, and some cider vinegar, which is optional. Wash and trim the greens. If, if I buy them in a packet and it says wash and trim, I tend to give them another wash anyway. Okay. Good greens always seem to have a bit of mud and sand stuck to them. That way you know they've just been freshly picked. So... Give them a good little wrench and clean them off. If using a ham hock, slice through it to the bone in several places so that it cooks more evenly and quickly. Place the ham hock or bacon in a very large pan. Add enough water to cover and bring it to a boil. Simmer for about, 20, about 30 minutes. Then add the onions, green peppers, garlic, chili flake, and simmer for a further 15 minutes. Check to see that the ham hock is cooked. If not, remove it from the pot and cut some of the meat from the bone into smaller portions and place it back in. This will speed up the cooking. Add the chopped mixed greens plus the salt, pepper, and you want to give this everything a good stir to combine it all together. You may need to cover the pan with a lid as this, at this stage as to help the greens begin to wilt. Depending on your personal preferences, you can cook the greens for about 10 to 15 minutes, just until tender. Or if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, the way my grandmother did, cook them to death, 30 to 45 minutes. I mean, back in the day, they used to boil them veg until they were mush. I don't like that. I like my veg a little bit al dente, so I don't tend to boil it to death, okay? But the preference is yours, okay? Here we go. So remove from the pan, place in a large serving bowl, drizzle over a little bit of vinegar on the top. Delicious. And serve it the way you like. And remember, if you're cooking for a vegetarian, you don't put the meat in. Just as good. Okay? 
Okay, here we go. Okra with stewed tomatoes. From the same family as the hibiscus and the cotton plant, okra was brought to America over three centuries ago by the African slaves. It's an acquired taste and one that most people either love it or they hate it. When buying okra, look for young, unblemished pods. Tender, but not too soft. And no more than 10 centimeters long. You don't want to get them too long because then they grow into about that length. That's, that's a really good size. It can be wrapped in kitchen paper and stored in the refrigerator for two to three days. Um, you can also freeze it for up to a year if you blanch it whole for about two minutes. Okay? When cut, okra releases a sticky substance with thickening properties, which makes it perfect, particularly suitable for soups, stews, and gumbos. Okra goes well with onions, peppers, and aubergines. So, I want one kilo of fresh or frozen um, okra, 100 millis of vegetable oil, one onion chopped, one garlic clove chopped, a half of um, scotch bonnet chili, I want some, ch or chili flakes, so a teaspoon of ground cumin, and some of my love dust, yeah, my Cajun seasoning. 500 grams of tomatoes, roughly chopped, or two tins of tomatoes. Um, one tablespoon, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper, and 25 grams of fresh coriander, chopped. If you're using fresh okra, um, trim the ends, then either leave it whole or slice it in half. Heat the vegetable oil in a pan and add the onions, garlic, and the cumin. Cajun seasoning and cook over a medium heat until the onion is coated with the seasoning. Stir in the okra and cook for two to three minutes to coat. Add the tomatoes, salt, pepper, and a splash of water just to lubricate it a little bit. Cover, reduce the heat, and cook gently for 15 minutes until the okra is soft and the tomatoes begin to take on some color. Sprinkle with coriander and serve on a bed of rice. Now here we go, southern style okra gumbo. Get into the gumbo. A variation of this recipe. Um, this full-on soul flavor includes sweet corn and broad beans to create a hearty gumbo. I tend to cook most vegetables with a little meat, but if you want a vegetarian gumbo, simply take the bacon out. You're going to want some vegetable oil, some streaky bacon or back bacon, one large onion, diced, green pepper, diced, a clove of garlic, diced, some of my Cajun seasoning, my love dust, and some dried chili flakes, which are optional. You want some fresh okra or frozen. You want some frozen broad beans. You want two um, cans of plum tomatoes, three tablespoons of tomato puree, some vegetable stock, one can of sweet corn, and some gumbo filet, salt and pepper. Heat the large, heat the oil in a large pan and add the bacon, onion, green pepper, and garlic. Cajun seasoning, and chili flakes. If using, gently fry for five minutes until softened. Add the okra, broad beans, tomatoes, tomato puree, and stock and simmer over a low key for 45 minutes, giving the mixture a stir from time to time just to prevent it from sticking. Stir in the sweet corn, touch of sugar, gumbo filet if you have any, and season with salt and pepper and serve over your rice. Now we're moving on to, oh yeah, here we go, sweet potato. Did I have a picture there? Oh, guys, sorry, sorry. I got to go back and show y'all a picture because I skipped it. Going back to the spring onion and kale. Spring onion and kale. Here is the picture. This is what it looked like. Okay. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Good. Okay. Gotta show you the pictures. 
Otherwise, what's the good of reading the story if you can't see some pictures? All right, let me just sit up here. Y'all see my shirt? Look. Hold up. Ah. Uh, have a dream. Uh, let me get back to it. Here we go. Ooh. So, sweet potato and butternut squash stew or soup. Okay, here we go. This is one of those quick and easy winter stews that are very satisfying on a, when the days begin to shorten. You can puree it or you can leave it chunky. So it can either be like, like a soup or like a stew. And this is what you need. You're going to need two tablespoons of olive oil. Uh, or vegetable oil, one onion diced, one garlic clove finely chopped, and a pinch of ginger, a teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of mama's love dust, a half of, of small butternut squash or a pumpkin can be used, peeled, seeded, and diced, two orange flesh sweet potatoes. I say orange flesh because in the Caribbean, you can get white sweet potatoes, but I'm just talking about your normal sweet potatoes, the kind that we all kind of are accustomed to using, our sweet potato. Two of those. Um, and you can also add one white flesh sweet potato, if you can find it. One regular white potato. Two carrots, two teaspoons of brown sugar, um, 150 grams of red or orange lentils, some coriander, uh, some double cream or creme fraiche. Um, 100 mil 125 milliliters is usually enough. Alrighty, here we go. Heat the oil in a large pan. Add the onion, garlic, ginger, cumin, and, cum and Cajun seasonings and cook gently until the onion has softened. Stir in the diced squash, potatoes, I thought I said potatoes, potatoes, I do say tomatoes, but I don't say potatoes, potatoes and carrots. Then add enough water to cover the vegetables. Bring to the boil and simmer until the vegetables are soft. Stir in the brown sugar and reduce the heat. If the vegetables have absorbed a lot of the liquid, add enough water, just enough to cover it again. Season with salt and pepper. Add the lentils and stir in until they are tender. Give the soup a good stir, then add the fresh coriander and remove from the heat. You can, like I say, you can serve it just as this is, and then it'll be like a really nice stew, or you can puree it. And then to serve, you add a dollop of cream, a dollop of cream on the top. Okay? And you can make yourself some sweet potato crisps as well, which would be delicious to go with it. All right, and this is what it's looking like. I've got some cornbread croutons on the top of that. Can you see it? Yeah, it looks good. All right, let me see where we are. I'm just going to take a little inventory here because, oh no, this is a long chapter. Yeah, this is going to have to be done in two. So what I'm, I will do this one. Pepper stuffed with cornbread. Oh, delicious. Yes, delicious. Here we go. Cornbread stuffing can be used for poultry, fish, or vegetables. Stuffed peppers make a great vegetarian main course and also a good accompaniment to a meal. Here we go. You want two red peppers, two green peppers, and two yellow peppers, six knobs of butter, and then you want some cornbread stuffing, all right? Now, I made that earlier, and so what you need to do is you go back and find that recipe for cornbread and the stuffing, because we're, all we're going to do now is you're going to scoop out and discard the seeds from the potato, from the peppers, then put a knob of butter inside of each one. Using a tablespoon, fill the peppers with the cornbread stuffing and place it back into an oven-proof dish. Drizzle with olive oil, shake some Cajun seasoning on top and place it into a preheated oven 
and cook until golden brown. Have a look at these. So remember, these are just pepper stuffed with my cornbread. Okay? Isn't that nice? And can you imagine that just on the side of some meatloaf or side of some chicken? Oh, dang, going, that's good. So, let's stick with these peppers stuffed. And this will be the last one for this one. And then we'll have part two of eight. So here we go. These are beef tomatoes stuffed with mince, which is ground beef, and mixed rice. This dish, let me sit back a bit. This dish looks as though you have spent a lot of time on it, when actually, in reality, it's very quick and easy to prepare. If you're able to get the really big, plump beef tomatoes, try experimenting by stuffing them with a variety of chopped meats and vegetables. You want four large beef tomatoes, which are the really big ones, one tablespoon of olive oil, 350 grams of minced beef, one small onion diced, pepper diced, and on garlic, and some love dust, some chili flakes, and then you just want to get some mixed rice. Now, nowadays, because it is just so quick, you know they sell those little packets of rice, pre-made, go and get yourself a packet of rice because that's all you need. This is what you're going to do. Carefully slice off the top of each tomato and with a small paring knife cut around the outside to loosen the pulp and remove that. Set it aside. Heat the vegetable oil in a frying pan. Add the mince and onion and fry until the meat has browned. Add the peppers, the garlic, and saute for another three minutes. Add the Cajun seasoning, your chili flakes, cook for five minutes. Pour off any excess oil. Stir in the pre-cooked rice or your packet rice and that pulp that you took out of the tomatoes, those seeds and stuff. Just mix it on in there. Stir the tomatoes with the mixture and then you place it back inside of the tomato and then you're going to cook this in a hot oven for about 30 minutes because remember your meat is already cooked all we're doing is softening down and blending those flavors together of that tomato so you want to cook for about a half an hour to 50 minutes and this is what it's going to look like okay really quick and simple and easy like I said, we've just done our um, tomato stuff and beef, and beef. Let's move on, okay? Because I'm going to try and get four more recipes in before we end this session. So here we go. Peppers stuffed with mince and <gasps> chorizo. That's a lovely form of sausage meat. Let's see how this one goes. Peppers can be stuffed with a variety of meats, rice, pasta, vegetables, and pulses. This is one of my favorite fillings. Four large peppers, any color you like. Red, green, orange, yellow, purple, any color you like. One tablespoon of vegetable oil. 400 grams of lean minced beef. Some of mama's love dust. Some cumin. An onion, finely diced. And two chorizos that I have cut up either. They can either be diced or sliced as well as one can of cream of mushroom soup and some rice, okay? And I find just get you the pre-packed rice. When you're making these sort of quick and easy dishes, go the easy way. Or cook up a whole bunch of rice, divide it into little bags, freeze them, and then you can pull them out and you're ready to go. So here we go. Slice off the top of each pepper and scoop out the seeds. Heat the vegetables in a large frying pan. Add the mince and cook for about five minutes until browned. Add the Cajun seasoning, cumin, onion, and chorizo and cook for about five minutes until the mince is done. Stir in the cream of mushroom soup and end the cooked rice. Remove from the heat and spoon the mixture into the peppers. Then drizzle with olive oil on the top. Place it back into the oven and cook them until the peppers are tender 
and the house is smelling of heaven. Because believe me, it will. Boom! Done! Next one. Stuffed aubergines or eggplants. Okay? An aubergine or an eggplant. Same thing. I have served stuffed aubergines in the restaurant since it first opened and they are very popular. I can serve them as a main meal. Okay? And here's what you're going to do. Two aubergines. Two teaspoons of sea salt. Some of my love dust. Some olive oil, an onion, garlic, mushrooms, chili flakes, and some of my cornbread stuffing. Cut the aubergines lengthways in half. And with a sharp knife, scoop. Carefully scoop out the flesh and set it aside. Sprinkle the shells with some sea salt and place them upside down in a bowl or leave for 20 minutes. Pat them dry with some paper towel. Sprinkle with the Cajun seasoning and set aside. Heat half the olive oil in a frying pan and add the onion, garlic, mushroom, chili flakes and scooped out aubergine flesh. Fry for 5 to 10 minutes over medium heat until all the vegetables are translucent. Then stir in the cornbread stuffing. If the mixture is too dry, just add a little bit of water or some stock. Using a large spoon, fill the empty um, shells with the mixture. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil on the top. Bam! Put them in the oven. Cook them. Comes out delicious. Okay? Now, you could also, with that aubergine, I want you guys to experiment. Think about, hmm, now mama just did some with some mints and some chorizo. Take that mixture and put it inside your aubergine as well. Mix and match. I'm giving you guys ideas here. The mind for you to just improve upon. Make it your own. Now here's another one. I love this. Baked stuffed sweet potatoes. I love me some stuff. You know you can tell that, don't you? Just like the traditional white potatoes, the what um uh, the sweet potato is a versatile vegetable. Delicious, boiled, baked, fried. This recipe makes a lovely vegetarian main course and can also be served as a side with meat. You want three large sweet potatoes, some olive oil, onions, peppers, two celery stalks, some chilies, coriander, some butter, some single cream, and some of my love dust, some salt and some pepper. Wash and dry the sweet potatoes, then slice them hat lengthways. Rub them all over with some olive oil. Place them on the top shelf of an oven, preheated, until the flesh is soft. You're going to cook them for about 45 minutes or so, half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on how big they are. Remove from the stove and leave enough to cool, cool enough to handle. Using a tablespoon, scoop out all of the flesh and put it into a bowl. Try, be careful not to split the skin, the outer skin. Then put the empty shells on a baking sheet and leave them to the side. Then you're going to add all of the remaining ingredients to the potato mixture, okay? All of those peppers and onions and all of those goodness. And then you're going to put it back into the shell. And then you're just going to put them back in the oven and just kind of bake it off till all of that juiciness comes together. <clears throat> Delicious stuff, baked stuff, sweet potato. And we're going to end on this one. Green bean vinaigrette. This makes a change. Oh my God. A change from a normal salad. Okay. This salad is designed to be eaten warm as a side dish. But if it cools, cools down, make it a salad. And you're going to need some green beans, olive oil, spring onions, sea salt, um, as coriander, and I have added some cherry tomatoes to this dish. And this is what you want to do. Just place your green beans in a pan of salted water. Bring them to the boil. Frozen green beans, perfect for this. Boil the water, drop them in, take them off, cover it, and leave it and walk away. That's it. Boiling water with your frozen green beans because those green beans are kind of blanched anyway. They're not raw. Stick them in. They're delicious. Then chill them down. 
Then what you want to do is you want to put these into a bowl. You're going to chop up some cherry tomatoes and you've got your spring onions. You're going to toss it all together. Then you're going to add some olive oil over the top and a touch of vinegar, some salt. Delicious. Have a look online. I'm going to show y'all a picture of this because I'm telling you, I'm doing this one right now. I make this one up for my, I've been doing some takeaways um, from the house. So hold on, let me just show you a quick picture on my phone of my green bean salad. Let me see here. Let me see, let me see if I can find it. Let me see. Let me just show you. Let me see here. There we go. All right, guys, can you see that? That's my green bean salad, and it's delicious. Okay, so stay safe, people. Listen to the rules. Mama gonna see you soon. Back in part two of my salads. Bye, people. See you soon.